Good morning everyone. Our today's topic is financial reporting. This is the second lecture under the lecture series. The course code is BM553 and I am Dr. Vinay Chalas. Today we will discuss <coughs> the users and users of financial accounting or accounting information, current general acceptance accounting principles or GAP, IFRS and Indian accounting standards and international accounting standards, the convergence issue, Indian accounting standard, international accounting standard and IFRS convergence and later on we will be checking it out the timeline for adoption of IFRS. Now let us begin with the users. In the last time, last class, we have discussed about the various uh, accounting principles like concepts and conventions. If we go ahead, we will check it out that there are two types of users who use the accounting data, internal users and external users. These two types of users are classified with the help of one line in this if we check it out, the internal users, it starts with the management. The first, the first internal user is management who wish to use the data of the company for their own purpose. After the management is required to maximum data, the HR of the company, the human resource of the company, they will require the accounting data. Finance people who provide finance to the company, they also require the accounting data and for the purpose of marketing, the budget and marketing expenditure required to be analyzed and for that purpose, these are the internal users who require the data. <coughs> if you move to the external users, the international uh, accounting authority, the investors who wish to invest in the company, the labor union, who also require to see the company's profit, if the company is getting more profit, they would like to get more. Similarly, the creditors who have invested their money in the business, who have given credit to the business, that is where they want to know that whether the company is able to provide them their money back or not. Similarly, the security exchange market, the market in which the company's shares are listed, we also wish to know the credibility of the company and that is why they require the accounting data. If you go ahead, finally, the end users are the customers. The customer require the accounting data because the customers also wish to know that whether the company from which they are taking the data is earning with sustainability, earning with uh, earning the appropriate profit or they are taking much more money from the people. So, they also wish to know that whether the product which is purchased from a company is gaining a, a, a normal or a simple profit or is charging much more higher money from them. Now, we will go ahead and check it out that what are the use of annual reports or what are the use of accounting data. If we check it out with the help of the two users which we have classified, first are the internal users. The internal users want that the company's financial position should be sound enough. So that if the company's position will be sound enough, they also believe that their company will go on and it will provide them help, not only the help but it will provide them everything for the future prospect. So internal users also know I also want to know that whether the company is financing from uh, financing from appropriate source, whether any other sources are available. If the, any other sources are available, they wish to take the loan and they wish to take, take the finance from that particular uh, that particular option. The investing resources also uh, also is equal importance for the internal users. Then they also wish to know that what are the resources which can be invested, what are the resources which they have keep it with them, like the working capital for which they need to take a particular amount of money, producing goods and services. The internal management 
or the internal parties wish to know that whether the goods and services which are being produced, what is their cost, what is their, uh, what is the number of expected sales, what will be the budget of their production, or in case of services, they wish to know that the product or services which is being provided for the those services, what will be the cost, what will be the cost of each item of service. Next is the marketing goods and services. If a company wish to introduce new product in the market and for that purpose they need to go for marketing of goods or the services which is produced by the company, then they wish to know what will be the marketing budget, how the marketing will be done, what will be the procedure of selecting a particular marketing method. So they require the accounting data for that purpose. Next is maintaining the employees. Each and every company has to maintain the good human resources which is invested or which is uh, in the business for the purpose of production which will provide help either to the production or which will uh, provide help or supporting services for the production. So the employees are maintained when the annual report provides the ample of information which is required for maintaining them. Normally for this purpose, the company's director's report provides number of employees, total cost of the employee services or total employee's cost including whatever is being paid to them so that the employees also knows that they are getting this much of money, they are getting this much of part from the total company's revenue so that they will make themselves satisfied that yes they are getting a uh, handsome part of the total company's revenue and they will be maintained in the company. The last one is providing information to the decision maker. The internal users, they require to know that what are the ratios of the company, what are the other uh, drawbacks of the company in the area of finance, what will be the company's situation. So the company's situation will also be required for them to know that which type of policy they can make. For example, if company is not having ample of money for starting and for running a new product in the market, then the internal users or the decision maker for the purpose of decision, they will go for financing the resources. The finance will be available from say three or four different modes. So which mode will be better? They will have to get the information and that information should be used for the business by taking the loan at a lower cost. The another use of the annual report is for informative purposes. The investor wish to know that their investment decision in a particular company will gain or will provide them more benefit or not. For that purpose, they also analyze the annual report of the company. Similarly, the creators who have given goods free of cost or on the basis of credit to the company, they wish to know that whether the inv their investment will be redeemed in the near future or not, whether the company's financial position is sound or not. If the company's financial position is not sound, they will not provide the loan or they will not provide the credit to the company. So, the annual report is used for providing uh, information to the outsiders for informative purposes. Then the tax authority. The basic motive of each and every company is either to increase the profit or to increase the wealth. The wealth will be increased on the basis of the decision which is taken by the management. So at the end of the accounting period, everyone wish to know what is the profit of the company. Similarly, internal and external users both, they also wish to know that whether the company is gaining profit or not. If the company is gaining the profit, the tax authority also wish to know because they will be calculating the tax for the tax which will be paid on by the company to the authority. So the tax authority is also interested in making the annual report. Next is for investing purpose. In various businesses where 
the government has allowed foreign direct investment, foreign institutional investment, and the other investors, other local investors in the home country to invest in the securities of a particular company. For the investment, they also wish to know that what is the company's financial position. And the company's financial position will be highlighted in the annual report. So that is why the external users wish to invest in the company, they will always go for checking out the annual report. The foreign direct investors, because their investment is more in a particular company, or they will make the portfolio. In the portfolio, they will select the company if the company's future prospect is good, if the company is getting the profit, and in the future the, com the company will gain profit. Foreign institutional investors are those institutions which will provide uh, uh, provide their finance in a particular sector for the purpose of the growth of that particular sector in the foreign country. So if uh, the foreign institutional investors are allowed say 49% or 74% in the various businesses, so if they will invest in that particular business, this much of the share which is invested by them for the business and they will invest only if the future prospect of that sector or that particular company is good. And finally the stock exchange and other groups. All the stock exchange which is rating or, or who are rating the company on the basis of the company's annual report, they require the accounting data of the company. The companies later on, on the basis of their profit, <coughs> on the basis of their ability of gaining the profit and other ratios, the companies are listed in the various uh, groups like group A, B, C, D and till the X group and last one the Z group. So A to Z are the basis of classification of the company. If a company is in the A group, that means the investors will believe that the company will gain them a profit and there is a high chance that the company will go on and on and their profit will be redeemed one by one each year. So the stock exchange also requires the data of the company. Now we will go ahead and we will be checking it out the generally accepted accounting principle which is our today's main aim. We in the previous lecture have seen that the accounting principles are there which is divided into two parts accounting concepts and accounting conventions. These concepts and conventions are followed in by the each company which is in a particular area and this is on the basis of the company's past practices. Then thereafter due to the problems which, which a company may face while accounting, all the companies will require to check out the solution from a particular place. For the purpose of gaining the solution, the company will have to look out the particular rules and regulations which is made by a particular concern in a country so that the guidance will be given and the company will get the guidance for the purpose of well maintain their accounts as per the accounting policy of the country. For that purpose, there are different sets of accounting standards which is available. The first one is the Indian accounting standard. The Indian accounting standards are the standards which is made by the Indian authority of issuing the guidance that is ICAI, Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, which is a central body and which is behind of issuing all the accounting standards in a particular country. Similarly, for our country, the ICAI will issue accounting standard or AS. These are the standards which have been issued by the company before. Now, thereafter, since the world is going towards making the same standard for various countries, that is why the common standards at the world level have been developed and the, the 
body of Indian origin that is ICAI Institute of Chartered Accountant of India have decided to go and have decided to convert the accounting standard which is used at international level into our Indian accounting practices. For that purpose, the other standards, those have been converted into the Indian standard and the new name is given to them that is INDAS, IND.AS, Indian Accounting Standard. The newly made accounting standard is made on the basis of the international accounting standards. There are two sets of international accounting standard. The first one is international accounting standard or IAS which is made and which is used commonly by various countries from the beginning of the convergence issue from 1959. While after 2000, these IAS have been converted into the International Financial Reporting Standards or IFRS which will be used and which will be given to all the countries for making their standard converge into the format of IFRS so that at the world level the practices of accounting will be similar. Similarly, the INDAS or Indian Accounting Standards are made on the basis of these two. First, we have converged the IFRS into INDAS. Total there are 13 IFRS which have been issued. Out of the 13, 8 have been converted and those 8 are used as INDAS 101 to 108. In the rest of the cases where we don't have IFRS, the International Accounting Standard IAS was converted into the INDAS so that these standards will be, made, will be used by each and every company and the accounting practices of our company will remain similar to the other part of the world. Now let us check out the small or brief history of the accounting standard. The first accounting standard which was made way back in 1935 in USA. The United States is the first country which have issued the accounting standard for the purpose of the problems which is during making the final accounts of the company. Later on, by checking it out the practices of the USA, the other countries have started their own uh, accounting standard like thereafter Australia and European Union, they have made the accounting standard which will be work in their own country. In 1966, a committee of accounting was being made. That committee has been made for a world level and the basic objective of this committee is to prepare the accounting standard which will be used by various entities or the members. In 1973, the International Accounting Standard Committee was being made. This committee, the International Accounting Standard Committee, have made the International Accounting Standard which were in existence up to 2000 and later on thereafter it is converted into the International Financial Reporting Standard. In India, the ICAI has constituted accounting standard board for making the accounting standard in our country on 21st of April 1977. This is the first work which is being done by the accounting body of India, the Institute of Chartered Accountant of India that is a charter company and made by the special law in the Indian constitution and it has made a accounting standard board for the purpose of setting up the accounting standard in India. Later on, the accounting standard committee, this committee which was made in 1973 was converted into International Accounting Standard Board, IASB and the IASB's work is to create the or uh, to found and to identify the areas where there is a requirement at the world level and they have made the IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standard at world level with the motive that it will be used by each and every company at world level. Gap in the different countries or and the differences in the accounting practices. 
there are various differences at the accounting practices at the different different countries that is because some of the countries are having some particular area where the where it has made the accounting standard in some other countries those areas were ignored in the countries there are some companies which are multinational company or multi multi country company which will be making the accounting standard in the different different part of the world as per the different different accounting standard so there are various problems with the accounting standard and that is why there is a gap in the accounting standard the gap in the accounting standards are divided into four part use of accounting standard in some of the part of the world some companies or all the companies are using the accounting standard given by their own country's accounting body but they have not identified some of the areas where accounting standards are required so that is why use of a particular standard will be only acceptable if their accounting body will provide or will make it com uh, make it compulsory to use the accounting standard otherwise that standard which will be used at world level will not be used in that particular company geographical constraint because all the countries are at different different uh, part of the world or within different continents they may not use the similar accounting standard multinational companies which is you which is doing their business in various countries in more than four countries if they want to make their accounts in all the countries they have to prepare a separate account because the accounting practices are different so on the basis of this the company has a problem and not only the problem in terms of making the accounting standard but due to the changes also in the accounting period the company has to concern a particular period and they have to consolidate the account in a different way for example in india the accounting year starts from 1st april and ends on 31st march of the next year while in the european union the accounting period starts on 1st january and ends on 31st of december so there is a difference of making the financial accounts in between the two countries for a three months period if a company which is which is a multinational company of european union working in india that company has to prepare their accounts and their consolidated accounts with the their parent company on 31st of march why if the same company is also doing the business in their own country that uh, company has to prepare their accounts their annual accounts in their own country on 31st of december but and which will also include or which will also consolidate the indian uh, business of the company so there are various problems and due to gap in the difference of accounting practices currency problem is certainly there because when the transactions are being made at that time the currencies price at the home country and at the foreign country is different by at the time of making the accounts the price or the exchange rate will be changed at the end of the year the again the same problem will arise so that is called as a multi currency problem and if the company is having these problems these problems should be sorted out and for that purpose the generally accepted accounting principles are required <coughs> so in india we have at this moment there are four standards which is applicable the accounting standard or indian accounting standard which is made at the uh, made by icai and accounting standard board after 1977 thereafter we have international accounting standard or ias which is the international standard and which is applicable to certain companies similarly the ifrs are the new version of the indian international accounting standard and those standards will be applicable will overlap the ias in the cases where the international financial reporting standards are applicable finally 
in India due to the problem of these two and their writing. What we did is we have converged these two into our Indian accounting standard that is called INDAS so that the standard will be used by Indian company and that is written in the Indian uh, language as well as in the method by which the Indian company's management and the accountant will be able to understand that. As we have already discussed that the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India was made as a charter or by Asian a charter in the parliament. This is working from 1956 and the role of the, uh, I, uh, the Indian Chartered Accountant Association of India that is to make the accounting standard, to make the accounting policies in for the uh, for our country. They have made total 32 accounting standards which are applicable in our country. International accounting standards are made by the International Accounting Standard Committee IASC in 1977 73. IASC has governed or is governed by 22 trustees. The International Accounting Standard from 1 to 41 was issued by IASC before 2001 and after 2001 it is being taken over by the International Financial Reporting Standard or the International fin Accounting Standard Board. The International Financial Reporting Standards were issued by the board. There are uh, they have issued total 13 standards, but till today in India we are using only eight. For the purpose of making the rule applicable, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has to issue a charter and. As per the last chapter of accounting standard which has been issued, total 8 IFRS were implemented and it is mandatory for all the Indian companies to use those 8 accounting standards. The Indian AS, as I have already mentioned that it is converged accounting standard, the converged IFRS and converged IAS, total 13 they have uh, were being issued. Out of the 13, total 8 were converted till 2013 in the form of INDAS 101 to 108. These are the IFRS which have been converted from 101 to 108. While recording chalti hai. So, have not been issued, the Indian International Accounting Standards were converged into the INDAS numbered from 1 to 29. In India, we have not 
used or we have not converged all the IMRS to all the companies or we have not made it compulsory for all the companies, we have made the adoption in three different phases. The first phase of which have started already on 1st April 2001 where the all the converged accounting standards and the companies which are having uh, which are the part of NSC Nifty 50 all the companies which are the part of BSC 30 census these two or the other companies with, which is having their shares or security listed in any stock exchange outside the India or if they have their capital excess of 1000 crore they all the companies which are counted in the form they have to start con using the converged accounting standard from 1st April 2011 this is the first guidelines which was been issued and which has been followed phase number 2 the companies which is having their net worth in between 500 crores to 1000 crore they will have to convert their opening balance sheet on 1st April 2013 and the financial year which commences on 1st April 2013 for which they have to use the newly converged or newly made accounting standards which is convergent to the IFRS. The IFRS converged accounting standard is called IND.AS in the AS which will be used by those companies on or thereafter 1st April 2013. Phase 3 was implemented on all the listed companies which have net worth of rupees 500, 500 crores or less. They will have to convert their opening balance sheet on 1st April 2014 into the accounting standard which is converged as per the IFRS. When the accounting year ends on the date that is other than 31st March, since I have already told that in the in the UK and European Union, they are using the period which starts from 1st January. So in that case, their, their conversion will be made in relation to the first balance sheet which is made on the day of 31st March. So on 31st March, they have to convert their accounting practices as per the newly made International Financial Reporting Standard or the Converged Indian Accounting Standard INDAS. Now thereafter, since uh, we have micro and small industry, we have large scale industry in our country, that is why there are some companies which have been given free hand to use or to say yes or no to the newly converged IFRS converged accounting standard. And in that category, there are two types of companies which have been included. If there is a non-listed company which is having net worth less than 500 crores and the shares of that company is not being traded in any of the country, countries, any of the share market, in that case, that company, if they wish they can adopt the international accounting standard and IFRS converged Indian accounting standard or otherwise they if they do not want they can uh, they are allowed not to adopt the IFRS and IAS converged accounting standard. Similarly the micro small and medium scale industry the SMEs and MSMEs they are also given free hand by the government that if they wish they can adopt the IFRS or otherwise they can uh, use the Indian accounting standard which is used in our country. Since there are various sets of accounting standard, the local accounting standard, the IAS international accounting standard, IFRS international financial reporting standard, that is why there is always a issue of harmonization of accounting standard where a particular country or group of countries will merge their accounting practices together in one format. So, for that purpose, the International Accounting Standard Board was made in 2001, which has taken over the International Accounting Standard Committee. As we have seen that in the board, there were members of 22 countries, while in International Accounting Standard Board, 
there are nine countries member which have been a part of this and they have issued the IFRS. The harmonization process will also begin in 1959 where all the countries have been given weight and they were thinking that why don't we use a common accounting standard so that the accounting practices will be common. The convergence was a problem and the solution was in the three stages where the India have adopted the IFRS. Similarly, the other countries have also adopted the IFRS and IAS converged accounting standard. Till 2012, more than 150 countries, including the important countries like Austria, Finland, Russia, Germany, France, UK, Australia, they have converted their uh, accounting standard as per the IFRS and IAS converged standard or they have agreed that it will be used in their country from a particular date. But for example, the US and the US Federal Accounting Standard Board FASB has later on rejected to adopt the IFRS. So, the first point says that it is used in more than 150 countries and thereafter. The second point says that uh, globalization and liberalization since it has increased and the world has converted into a global village, the accounting standard and regulations which will be helpful for the companies to grow their business must remain same and that is why the IFRS is required. The IFRS have been made by ICAI but it should be used only when the Ministry of Corporate Affairs MCA will release a press note or will release the Gazette of, in the Gazette of India that these rules will be applicable from this particular day. Similarly, on 22nd January 2010, the roadmap of convergence was being uh, accepted by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs and they have issued a press release so that it will be made it compulsory to use the accounting standard by all the companies. Similarly, the section 211 3C of the Companies Act 1956 was changed and was, uh, was included that the accounting standards which will be converged from IFRS shall be applicable for all the Indian companies and the companies which have been given free hands, those who are having less than 500 crore rupees capital with unlisted, unlisted status and the micro and small scale industries are being given free hand that if they wish they can adopt or otherwise they can use the old Indian accounting standard. And as per the roadmap, the various companies have adopted now the, I have also listed out the various international financial reporting standards which have been converted into the Indian Accounting Standard or INDAS. As I have already mentioned that total 8 have been converted into Indian uh, Equivalent Accounting Standard INDAS. So those 8 are from INDAS 101 to INDAS 108. These are in terms of the adoption of financial standard, share based payment, combination, the insurance contract, non-current assets, exploration for evaluation of mineral resources and disclosures and finally the operating segment. These aids have been converted. Similarly, the total IND is from 1 to 32 and overall is 41 which is converted from the international accounting standards are also enlisted here. The INDAS is related with the presentation of financial statement. INDAS 2 is related with the inventory. IAS 7 which has converted into INDAS 7 is related with the statement of cash flow. 
Similarly, eighth one is related with the accounting policy, and those others which are being used are enlisted here. There are total forty, out of which there are total seven standards which have been withdrawn. So those are not included here. So that's it for the today. I hope that I have given it to you the brief introduction and history of the Indian and international accounting standard, which will be useful for the purpose of understanding of international accounting standard, international financial reporting standard, and the users who will use in uh, these standards in their own domain. Thank you.